Hey there! Uh, this video is a bit of an odd one. I wanted to celebrate the oddball week that's going on on the Vintage Apple subreddit community. And boy do I have an oddball to show you here today. So this is an Apple set-top box prototype or uh, some type of multimedia prototype box that was supposed to connect up to a television set. Uh, this is uh, from around 1993, 1994, um, and uh, it's all sorts of odd. It's definitely a prototype. It's not a product that was supposed to be uh, in the hands of a customer. Uh, it has a very boxy, unfinished look. Um, there's a few pieces to this thing. Um, unfortunately, it does not work, uh, but I will be giving you uh, a tour around the inside of this. Uh, some of my thoughts about it, how I uh, came to be in the hands of this thing, and uh, what I know about it. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. The first thing you may notice is that this set-top box is very plain and very un-Apple-like in its design. Well that's because it's a prototype, they aren't going to spend time and money on a design for a product that may or may not happen. However I must say that I do admire its boxy, no frills design, it has its own charm to it. Thankfully the cool parts inside make up for the plain exterior. What you're looking at is actually two components. The bottom is an Apple set-top box board, and the top is a customized Macintosh motherboard. The Macintosh motherboard, or logic board, is stacked on top of the set-top box, and I'll show you how it connects in a moment. First thing I want to note is that there is no power supply right now. I have removed it from the set-top box, but it does plug in here. From what I could tell, this is the same power supply that is used on the Macintosh 2CI. I've taken out the Macintosh LC board here so we can get a better look at the set-top box. The Macintosh LC motherboard gets its power from a cable that runs from the set-top box to the board. A few other items are connected to the set-top box board via these red cables. One is a green LED status light. The other is an infrared sensor to be used with a remote control. Another is a fan on the back of the unit. And this weird toggle switch or something or other, unfortunately it's broken, but it looks like it was either a knob or a switch or something like that. And finally on the left side of the unit, there's a little black grounding cable that hooks into the power supply. As far as getting signals to your TV, we start off with a pair of SCART connectors, likely one being an input and one an output. If you're not familiar with SCART, well, it's a European connector that is kind of like an analog version of HDMI. It carries audio and video signals in one cable, but has enough extra pins to support some other signals as well. Then we have a pair of coaxial RF connectors, one being an input and an output, along with a channel selector to select what channel the RF output signal is being sent to. As far as networking goes, the set-top box does have an Ethernet port that is located next to the two SCART ports. Now the Macintosh board here is different from your standard Macintosh LC logic board. It looks to be a Macintosh LC 475 logic board, but it does have some customizations. A really weird thing is that this Macintosh motherboard has the PDS slot on the other side of the board. On a standard Macintosh LC board, the slot is on the same side as the processor and the memory slots, but here it's on the bottom so it could connect to the set-top box board. In addition, we have wires coming out of both the audio out and the modem serial port on the LC board. Some of the connectors have broken off here a bit, it's nothing I couldn't solder, but I assume this would be to transfer audio output from the Mac to the set-top box, and maybe transfer some network or data signals from the Mac to the set-top box. Other than that, and besides the oddball serial number, this Macintosh board seems to be your run-of-the-mill Macintosh LC475 motherboard. It has the same ports and connectors of your standard Macintosh from the mid-1990s, as well as a 25MHz Motorola 68LC040 processor. So let's plug the Macintosh board into the set-top box board and show you how it all comes together. Sorry for my elbow being in the shot here, but unfortunately the way this thing connects is not exactly perfect. There's a lot of little screws that have to go through these little holes in the board, and you have to seat things just right with this PDS slot. There's a lot of cables running under this board and everything, so it's kind of a mess. But once everything is connected, you can see it looks a lot more like a Mac. Well, kinda. 
Now we'll just add in the power supply. This looks very similar to a Macintosh 2SI power supply and it's probably just another example of Apple using what they had for this prototype. This is the power supply that came with the prototype. Years ago I did try swapping the power supply to a known good 2SI power supply, but it made no difference and the machine still wouldn't turn on. Finally, we just want to connect this power connector that delivers power from the set-top box to the Macintosh motherboard. Although everything is plugged in, that's about it. Uh, this thing will not turn on, unfortunately. I will humor you by plugging in the power cord to the power supply and plugging in an Apple keyboard and trying to turn the thing on. But I'm not going to hold my breath on this one. Yeah, nope, nothing. I'm not even sure how this thing would turn on, to be honest with you. Maybe it gets a signal over the Ethernet port, or maybe there's this little switch by the RF ports, maybe that's actually a, a knob or a button to turn this thing on, but I did jump those pins and nothing happened. The only other idea I had was using one of the old Apple Multimedia remote controls. After putting fresh batteries in both units, well, yeah, nothing happened unfortunately. When I had much more free time on my hands years ago, I spent some weekends tinkering around with this thing and pretty much got to the same result. Back then, I recall even plugging in an LC power supply to the LC board directly to try and get it to boot up. And although I could get the board to boot up, it just acted like your standard Macintosh. When I plugged the board into the set-top box, powered via that method, it still didn't do anything except freeze on boot up. I even tried downloading some extensions provided by an old Macintosh user group that supposedly were extensions for a set-top box, but it didn't do anything and I just ran into a, a dead end and just got frustrated. At the very least, it's a fun piece of history to look at. Speaking of history, let's take a look at the back of this unit. I actually taped this poster note on because I was afraid it was going to fall off years ago. If you can't read it, the text reads March 20th, 1995. Received from Kate Kelly. Owned by Kate, but no memory. I can understand that in two ways. Either the system has no memory installed, or Kate has no memory of what the heck this thing was and why she had it. Either way, there's another little interesting label here. It reads STB1. 93. Likely meaning set-top box prototype 1 and the year of 1993. Below reads Apple Computer with a copyright date of 1994 and an interesting location of Austin, Texas in the US. Not your standard Cupertino, California, which you might have expected. I got this prototype in exchange for doing website work for someone back in the early 2000s. They had a lot of Apple prototypes and things like that, and I was interested in this unit enough to do some work for them for essentially free for them to ship me this item. I knew it was a doorstop basically, but the curiosity got the best of me. A more well-known Apple set-top box prototype is the 1995 model. Although it looks like more of a limited run production model than a prototype, judging by the amount of fit and finish. Years ago, a bunch of these were on eBay, and I picked one up, although, as expected, it didn't do anything except look pretty. Apparently, the idea behind these boxes was to turn your TV into a multimedia internet device, giving you access to the World Wide Web, shopping information, and a whole lot more. Apple had a lot of video products in the 1990s, like this one here. A lot of these products were either TV capture cards or video capture cards, allowing you to import or export video right on your Mac. So it's not a far stretch of your imagination to have Apple selling this, a set-top box, to be connected to your TV in your living room. Wikipedia states that Apple actually had these devices running at Disneyland hotels in California for a short period of time. 1995 was a difficult time for Apple. The company was focusing on a lot of efforts at that time, so it's easy to see why they could have decided to pull the plug on this project and focus their energy elsewhere. So I guess that covers just about it. I just wanted to show you my Apple set-top box here for the oddball week that the vintage Apple subreddit is having and just really give you a, a tour of what this thing is and how I came across it. I hope you found this video informative and interesting. Um, if so, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Do you have any Apple prototypes or oddball things? Go take a look at that subreddit and uh, maybe you'll find something interesting. I do have a few other videos that I'm currently in progress on. They do take a while, so I appreciate your patience. As you can probably tell by my workspace here, there's a lot going on at the same time. However, if there's something new, I will post it, and I hope you will enjoy that when I do. But uh, I guess that's it for today. 
So, thanks for watching. Hmm, wonder if this remote will turn that off.